Kathy Nisbet was orphaned at the age of three, and her journey has been one knock after the other, but she's still standing, and she's here to tell us more. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us on Turning Point. Thank you for having me. Now, let me start with uh, what, at least what we know of the beginning. You've been orphaned at three. Uh, mm -hmm. When you think back at those times, what are your earliest memories? What are the pictures that flash up in your mind? I think the worst time was uh, when we went into foster care. And uh, there was a lot of abuse that was in there. A lot of verbal abuse, but there was a lot of physical abuse. Uh, this, um, the foster father, and I'm using that word father very lightly, um, he used to do things like uh, use a steel brushed dog brush, like with the stiff bristles. And he used, that's how what he used to brush my hair with. And he would put it into a, a ponytail that was so tight that um, if I turned my head, it would automatically pull hair out. Um, uh, beatings. He one time he beat me with uh, a hula hoop. He would break it and, and whip me, and the welts were so bad. And then he, then he would just put me in a room where I would just have to spend time all by myself. Never a doctor, never any care given. Um, so it was uh, it was horrendous because you never really knew what the next. You're always on edge because there's always something that was going to happen. You know whether it was verbal, whether it was physical. And and, and so the, there's a there's a catalogue of things that happen with you and, and it mm -hmm. progresses. But uh, I was intrigued to know that you you you're quite a good swimmer, quite a sports mm -hmm. person. How how did you get to that? And um, my my mother, my new adopted mother, uh, she she would. Bring, drag me to the pool every day in the summertime, and she would sign me up for lessons while I would sit on the side of the pool and I would be, I'd scream. I'd literally scream. I'd, the last thing I wanted to do is be in the water, be around people. And she would just sit outside the fence and let me go. She did this for two years, okay? When I was six years old, I had watched enough people swim. I, would, I got frustrated. I got up, went to the deep end, dove in, did a perfect dive in, and did perfect front crawl. Oh, wow. Within a week after that, they and put me into a race, and I won my first race at six. Oh. Um, I was I was hooked, but I was obsessed with winning. And if I was third, second, <laughs> throw the throw those out. Not good enough. It always had to be first or nothing. Where did Jesus come into all this? Um, he came in when I was 15. Um, our high school was ha um, had a uh, allowed a person, uh, Jesus freak out of California, uh, to come and and talk to the students. I was in, I was he, he so impressed me because I I'd, I'd been a Catholic, but I didn't know this Jesus that he was talking about, and I I had to know. I just had to know. I was one of these people that you know once my my interest was peaked, I had to go follow. So I skipped out of school the rest of the day, followed and went to a Bible study and gave my life to him, and to the Lord. And um, it didn't last long because I didn't know about fellowship. I didn't know about reading my Bible. I was just new. Mm -hmm. So um, two years later, I, I had an opportunity again. And I, it was actually Easter morning. I gave my life back to the Lord. I'd actually watched a movie that had touched my heart mm -hmm. so badly in such an incredible way, not badly, but an incredible way that uh, um, I gave my life. And it's been up and down ever since. An in, in incredible life. Now, our, our time is short. We, we have about two minutes. Yeah. But um, I'm keen to, to ask you about your son, Joel, because mm -hmm. uh, you, have, you have him. Mm -hmm. And you say that you hear God speak to you about him. Uh, yet, later on, you lose him. Tell, him. tell us a bit about him. Um, it's the first time I held Joel. Um, and looked in his eyes, um, the Lord spoke to me very strongly that I wasn't going to have him for a long time. And um, because he was a twin, we also had his twin sister and uh, to deal with. So we kind of, I kind of forgot about it. But as he grew, as he got older, he would say things to me like, Mom, I don't want to be here. I want to be with Jesus. I, I don't want I, I, I to be, I just want to go home and be with Jesus. And uh, this, the, the reality of what the Lord had told me was starting to come to pass in, in his life and coming to pass in my life. And um, I just, he, 
he asked me one time, he said, does it bother you when I say things like that, Mom? And I said, of course, it bothers me. I said, I'm your mother. I love you. Of course, I don't want you to, to lose you ever. And I said, but we're joint heirs in Christ. That's my desire. Let me ask you, between when you held him and you heard God speak and when you lost him, how many years? Um, he was 22 oh. when he passed away. Um, we had that conversation about him you know, he asking me, what do I do? And I said, to pray the, the Lord's will in your life. And that was about, I think he was 18 then. And it was, um, it was hard. And I fought with the Lord because I'm, going, I'm not strong enough to do this. You can't have him. You can't take him. There's no way I'm not strong enough. It's going to destroy me because I was really close to Joel. Like, like we were so close. Mm -hmm. And um, the Lord asked me, did you dedicate him to me? And I said, yeah, I did, we did. And he said, he's mine. And I said, yes, he is, Lord, he's yours. And I stepped back and that was when the Lord started to prepare me. And he was prepared, had prepared Brian. He'd also talked to my husband, had shared, told him that he was, we we're gonna lose him. And also his twin sister. So the Lord was preparing the family. Wow. And amazingly. Well, our, our time is up, but one final question for you. Mm -hmm. So when, when it happens, I mean, you have a catalog of things in, in, your, in your bag already that's happened, and, and you lose Joel and you ask God why, even though he's told you it'd be short. Mm -hmm. How do you then deal with the, the pain you feel in your heart, the emptiness in the home? It's, you know, I, I actually wrote something that, and it was said like, how can this pain and this joy be inside of me? The pain of losing him, but the joy of knowing that he's with the Lord. The pain of not holding him ever again, but knowing someday I will, I will see him again. The pain of, um, of seeing his sister go through such terrible things, but the joy of seeing the result in her life that has come about because of the pain she went through. The, um, the pain of seeing, of seeing his father put his ashes in the ground, but the joy of knowing that that's not who he is. He's with Jesus and that his father is gonna see him again and we're gonna all embrace and we're gonna all be together. And so pain and joy, it's in us and it's in everybody at some point in their lives. But the Lord has instilled that in so strongly in me that where there's pain, there's joy. He takes away the pain and he is my joy. Kathy, thank you so much for thank sharing that with us. Me.